Okay. Now stop it. Uh, algebra 2B, Unit 7, <laughs> second half of um, Assessment 2, Imaginary Numbers. And action. All right, now, this guy here, anybody know the name of the guy in red? Quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. Um, uh, let's see. So one or two people, if you got a way to memorize it. Anybody got a way to memorize it? Yes. Song, How'd the song go? I've heard this idea that there's a song, but I've never heard it. Okay. Oh, three. No. One, two, three. Not... X equals negative B plus the minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2. Yeah, good deal, good deal. Anybody know another way to memorize it? No, you guys aren't going to be singers, but that you're going to be smart kids, and that's cool. I know it's the dun 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 Oh, pop goes a weasel. Got it, got it. Anybody know another way? <laughs> a little softer. Um, uh, try some good hear you. Maybe text him a little bit. Um, um, you can still say it, but just soft, soft, soft. Did you raise your hand? Yeah. Um, I don't remember it all, but it was like the negative boy was indecisive to go to the party with the B squared with them, the four awesome chicks, and it all ended at 2 a.m. Uh-huh, right, right. You got that from Brian, me? Where'd you hear that? Um, it was at my old school. Old school, right, right, right. I've heard that one before. Uh, I do that version of it. Uh, there was a bad boy. One trip, one go to the party. He went to the party, but he was a square. Square is, of course, the old term for not being cool. And that's why he missed out on four awesome chicks. Chicks are women. In uh, London, they call birds. A baby bird is a chick. It's beautiful. That's why you call women chicks. The party's all over at 2 a.m. Okay. Heard that bird. Whatever version you're going to do, you need to memorize it. Um, because here comes the answer. Um, let's get one of the. I'm just only do one or two of these. Use your notes when it's time. Here it comes. Step one Any formula, including in pre calculus, where some of you are going. They're all a puzzle. They're a puzzle where you need all of the pieces of the puzzle, except usually for one piece. This puzzle over here has the letters the A, the B, and the C in this puzzle. Hey Thomas, why am I going to get those puzzle pieces? Oh, I did this enough. Oh. If you've used this formula before, raise your hand. Oh shoot, sweet. I don't even have to teach it except for the two who don't know it. And you guys, you just got messed up by the others. Um, the number in front of uh, the x squared term is A. The number in front of the x term is B. The number at the very end, including its sign, is C as a cat. You write them down. A is a, ooh, anybody know what A is? Yeah, it's a one when it's missing. Um, two is an eight, and then three, of course, is a negative 24. Uh, you put it into the thing and then you work it, work it, work it. Uh, the big deal on this is going to be, ooh, let's find out who's smart here. It should be on your handout, uh, not on that one. Another one on the handout or go. Oh, anybody have this handout or no? All right, pause. Uh, let's see here. Any formula you just put in the piecel, pieces. Yeah, that's right. Pieces. Yeah. Um, B, I'm going to encourage you guys to put parentheses to represent where you're going to plug in the numbers. Um, and so it's on your page. Here you go. What are you, B? B is an 8. I hope I have kind of cool enough to call people B when I say it. Yo, what's up, B? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to put it? Alright, here comes on. What is a B? You're 8 again. 4 AC, where are you, A? You're a 1. They love that. C, what do you use? Negative 24. Yeah, um, Scott of the Sky Man is right. Uh, we're going to need to calculate for that big 24. And then what's this other guy here? Um, 2A? I just put it into the formula. Some of you have used this before. Can't remember what they're. Oh, this. I don't know what this is for. You know how we said these find the x intercept? You know, where the squiggly lines hit the x axis? This is another way to find it when you get one of these big guys. You just plug it in, whatever answers it gives, um, that'll be it. Let's see if I get this done in two minutes. Anybody know? Uh, negative 8 is there. Plus or minus. Uh, I know it's a 64. Should be in a different color. Let's see, negative 4 times a negative 24. You don't need the 1, because again, 1 times anything is just that thing itself. Uh, multiply out of order. Um, so let's see. How much? 
doesn't go with 80, yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, 4 times um, 20 is 80, 4 times 4 is 16, 80 plus 16 is 96. Trust me, you. It's not, someone else speak now, I'm forever holding peace, I'm going to say at a wedding. In other words, you know these people shouldn't be together. While everyone's dressed, people flew from out of town, you stand up right now and say, I know that Eric cheated on his wife last night, on his wife to be last night. And they shouldn't get together. I know Eric is on drugs most of the time. They shouldn't get together. I know Eric has a secret past. He's married to another lady in another state. Everyone's like, <gasps> and then that'd be so sweet. Hopefully you're not filming right now. This is how oh, awful yeah. the story is and like say let's just do this. Anybody know what a six four oh, ninety six is? That's bad news. It's not gonna work out good. I'm gonna stop right here. How did that get in there? Not only did it do um, perfect squares, why did it do it this time? I don't know. If you get to this point and the number inside isn't a perfect square, you can stop with a give you credit. So I'm stopping with a 160 or whatever. Pause. Uh, any questions? Reason they need to fix something. You guys may remember from Unit 2, they're doing an Alpha 2A, that um, we were graphing parabolas. You may remember the original parabola. He was uh, like right down here. You may remember the, um, what's that thing called? The parent function was y equals x squared. Anybody remember what you need to do to this function to make the green go up? Go up by one? Plus one? Yeah, plus one. Um, so they make the thing go up plus one, um, which is now this thing here. Here's the problem. If you need to talk, maybe whisper a little bit more that way. Yeah, it doesn't really mess the whole thing up. Or, oh, I need to get some water, and then that way we both win. Um, in any case, um, in this situation, they asked you to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, all you do is turn the y into a zero. And then from there, you solve it. No big deal. So, of course, they went to solving it. This is attracting one from both sides. No big deal. The y with negative one equals x squared. Anybody know how to get rid of that little two? Square. Yeah, square root. It's no big deal. They like moving right along. Like this is obvious, easy math. They put the square root, the square root, and now they're left with this question. Can't square root. All right. What number times itself will give you the number inside the house? Now here's a picture. The red line is a picture, so this thing exists. So they need to solve this somehow, and the answer was we like negative one times negative one. No, that's positive one. Negative one times the positive one. No, the numbers can't be separate. They have to be exactly the same number times itself. They're like, you know what, while we don't know, we can see it's there, so let's just, we imagine that there's an answer. And we'll say that answer is an I, an imaginary number that's out there waiting for somewhere. We don't know what it is, but so that the math works, we'll just make it up. And so that's where you are. Um, you have to are going to find out that the square root of negative one also has a nickname, and that nickname is I. Um, so that's what's going on with all that. The other part that's true is this. If ever you have a parabola that's floating in the air, or floating below, it doesn't touch the x-axis. There's an imaginary number somewhere, there's an I somewhere. We may not know where it is, but it's somewhere. And that's going to be important. They're going to give you a picture. And they'll say, hey, what can you say about this picture? The picture may look a little bit like this red thing. And what you may need to be able to say is, hey, now there's an imaginary number somewhere, there's a complex number. Complex means there's an imaginary part somewhere. So, let's leave that at that. I'm going to run down to the conjugates one more time, and then I'm going to jump into the middle stuff, which is just, can you multiply negative 1 times negative 1? Can you multiply the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1? Can you multiply radical 3 times radical 3? If you can, then you get some free points. Um, you just got to be patient when you do it that way. Any part, any part in there you can miss a sign. I'll look out for that. If it's worth three points, you miss a sign, you get two out of three. If it's worth two points, I'll give you one out of two. If it's one point, uh, I'll have to decide when you missed it. And decide how you can have it. All right, now let's see if I can get all the way down to, to the conjugates again, just to talk about them as complex numbers. See that picture right there? He's the guy who's going to mimic the question, hey, what's up with that picture? There you go. The reason I want to come back to context for just a second is to say words like complex numbers. Complex numbers. Write down complex numbers. You 
You're complex. You're complex. Complex would be a good thing in math. If someone says you're complex in real life, usually they mean you're difficult. And if they mean you're difficult, that means you're slightly irritating because um, you could be easy going. So you don't kind of want that compliment. But it also means you could be a lawyer. Um, that means you're, you uh, pay attention to detail, and uh, he's a tricky one. So here's the deal. Just so you don't miss you wrote it down, you take a when you get your test back. And you, these are complex numbers because they have a real part. You gotta keep it real like on Chappelle show. <laughs> For real. That's hilarious. The lady got a phone call. Alright, um, then you need the imaginary part. Imaginary. Was it this class that we saw the uh, preview to Key Peel's new movie? Was it? No, it was here. Right, very nice. Turns out, uh, I was uncensored. I don't know if you guys uncensored with you. Um, to get the conjugate of a complex number, you just change the sign in the middle. Don't mess around with that negative sign up front. Got it, got it, got it. Here, this is just the second half. But what happened to the first half? If the first half is missing, of course, it was a zero. You don't have to put in that zero if you did for me. Feel kind of old about you. I don't know what other math people feel. Like I like the fact that they know there was a zero up front. All right. Uh, do me a favor. Somebody count how many boxes um, or pages there are for these, this slot, these slides. Not the actual page, but the boxes. That might know how many we're messing around with. Um, we'll pose it to Tim or Brian or Bonnie, but Bonnie's in um, Thailand and she's about to climb a mountain. Not a mountain, but there's a rock out of the sea. Apparently, this is something you do. You can pause it. Uh, so, for those who don't know, of course, if you square the top piece, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. The radical and the two are inverses. They cancel each other out, hence leaving an empty negative one anytime you have an I squared. That I squared equals negative one is going to be way important. That's the piece that one or two missed when they tried. Um, this section of the test already. Good news for them, they just gotta tweak it a little bit and you're good to go. Alright, next piece. Oh, shoot. That's one of the other tasks doing it. And not yet. Did I do it? Sure, I'll say it real fast. This is all there already. Um, let's do some simple ones. Uh, hopefully, everyone knows the square root of uh, 9 is a 3. Hopefully, they know the square root of 16 is a 4. Um, if there's a negative sign in there, like for example, the square root of a negative 9, technically that means you have the square root of negative 1 times the regular 9. You break those into two pieces. Hey, negative 1, you get your own place. Um, 9, you get your own place. The square root of negative 1 is the letter I. Hopefully you'll remember that. The square root of 9 is a 3. Because I technically is a letter that represents a number, you still put it in the back, so 3i is what they're doing right now for the final answer here. Take a look at that, see how you feel about it. Wait a second, did I get this? How did I get that? Eventually you won't write all that long stuff. Eventually you will know. If you see a negative sign inside of the radical, the answer will be whatever number i. So for example, now that we've done the long version, anytime I'm supposed to do the square root, so now we negative 16, uh, it's a 4 for that part, and this minus sign. No big deal. And therefore, this long problem that they're doing over here, I know up here, 5 times whatever the inside is. The inside is going to be an 11 and an i. How does it know the i thing? There's a negative sign inside of a radical. It will always represent a negative 1, and radical negative 1 represents an i. If there's someone knocking at the front door, uh, if you don't know who they are, don't open the door. They may steal you. The kids are five and eight. Doorbell rings. They run to hey, hey. Come away from the door. Let me look through. I don't know that person. We're not open. Um, there could be someone not to give about literature, sell stuff. Look, if I didn't invite you to my house, yeah, don't knock on the door. Call me. Oh, you don't have my number? That's because you don't know me. Uh, so in any case, um, yeah, I don't open the door. My wife's like, yeah, what would you like? I'd like to steal you. How about that? One of us still talks. Well, then if I see you, they're like, oh, try to get my address. Get away from the door. I'm not going to steal you. Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. Yeah, yeah they're all nice. I'll take out the trash. All right, here goes out. There's the answer. Take a look at it. See if you, you're nervous about it. 
can't imagine I can give you. What if I came these? to your house if I wanted to look for your story? Hear a story? Uh, if I didn't invite you, you're outside. Yeah. <laughs> what if it was like business purpose, like we want you to tell stories? Yeah, yeah, if I didn't invite you, you're outside. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't invite people to the house. Like, uh, we'll pay you a thousand dollars. Slide it under the door and I'll think about it. <laughs> now we're in business, man, maybe. Give me the first 500, you open the door for the second five. <laughs> No, I'll keep the five, get away. Alright, uh, <laughs> Is anything happening here? No, nothing special here other than the outside represents a negative one. Um, hey, Thomas. Oh, shoot. Yeah, let me see this again. Pause for a second. Did they make you guys? You break it into two pieces. Everybody gets the house. Square root of 16, you're a four. Square root of six, we don't know, so we just leave it. Square root of negative one, you're going to become an I eventually. And this negative sign up here, multiply it on the four. Hopefully, you can see that. A lot of work and not putting it on there, but I figured let me just say it's done really fast. This part here, uh, it's unfortunate they did this. Oh, thank you. Notice this I that was after the six. I didn't notice it. I was going to say to you, be careful with that. Is the I under the house or is it outside of the house? Well, you put it in front so that you know I is not inside. Um, take a look for 30 seconds, see if it's anything. Let's, let me back up for a second, make sure I get my stuff right. I know that, uh, let's see, x to the um, third power times x to the second power, we add those, not my mind, x to the fifth power. I know that x to the third power um, times x to the second power, or raised to the second power, x to the sixth power. Side by side, you add them, one guy trapped inside, you multiply them. That's fine. It's the second one that's going to be important. Alright, here we go, here we go, here we go. We know that um, I to the first power is just I. We're going to try and get down to four of them. I to the second power is... No, 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 no. I is radical. Like that. Forget well, that. IQ is something. And I to the fourth power is an important one because then I'll be equals a regular one. That's the guy I'm trying to get to. Three, what are you, three? Oh, no, watch this. I to the third power is just a regular I times. Um, and I to the third power, I squared. You are a radical one. And your friend here is a negative one. Therefore, this guy is a negative radical one. Which is a negative I, that's a lot of stuff. And then to go, the third one is just a negative I. So I hate your third row. Put a star on fourth row, he's your friend. Hey, will we get to use our notes? Yeah, yeah, we will. Hey Thomas, well, what is all of this about? Like, what do we need all of this for? Whenever they give you an i to the 24th power, it's periodic. Any i to a power is going to eventually equal one of these four things. Either you're going to equal a negative or radical one, uh, you're going to equal a negative one, you're going to equal a negative i, or you're going to equal just a one. Yeah, this is going to work out good. Let me just do this problem and see how I do on it. And then I may just give you credit this time. All the x ones are just regular. One, two, three, four. Thomas, doesn't anything just i to the power equal one? No, it is not true. i to the one power equals radical negative one. i to the second power equals... But in this case, is it? You mean this thing here, or you mean these guys here? Well, we're going to find out. Hopefully you're right. So here's my plan. My plan is somehow to get an I4 somewhere. This is my plan. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side thing. Step one, I'm going to separate these two. Right. I want to happen. I want an I four inside raised to 
some power. I4 is just one, and so if I get an I4 raised to some power, the whole thing would just equal one. That's my plan. But I gotta think about it, so I'm moving on. I don't need to mess things up on one problem I'm for now. I'll just give credit on it. Eventually, I'll show you how it should have been done. Uh, but they only have one exam test. I'm going to the next slide. Keep what you have there. Keep what you have there. Yeah, that guy there. That's it. Yeah, yeah, we're down to the end. This guy. Good. Um, let me remind them that they've done this before. Here it comes. X plus three, five. They're gonna do the fiber. I'll let them have the fiber. X plus five times X minus five. Okay, hey, Thomas, how do you do that? Oh, don't forget, you just do a quarter of the whole. I do X times um, the, those two, then five times those two. Here it comes, X times X, X squared. X times the negative five. Negative five X, hopefully no one's confused so far. Here it comes, five times, I'm gonna distribute five to both guys over there. Five times an X, is it positive five X? Five times the negative five, Oh, see, I look at it, see if you're confused. Where'd you get that? This five right here or this five right here? Oh. This is a made-up problem. Good question. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this is an example of stuff you already know how to do. We are scaffolding right now in education. I'll oh, go back to what they know, and then when they do it the second time, like, oh, same thing, except there's a nine. Last piece you know with conjugates and old school conjugates, the middle piece um, cancels out, which it will with the new school conjugates as well. So here, negative 5 plus positive 5 cancel out to 0, leaving us the beginning and the end. Hopefully you can see that. Bring our results closer together. Pause a moment, take a look at it, see if you're confused. Where did you get the negative 25? What happened to the two fives? Alright, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to have you do it up here. Then, no questions, we'll go to one last version of this. I'm going to peek on here and see. Yeah, yeah. Some of the last one, and then um, you'll have the tools we need. Um, we'll Alright, I'm doing C, and then you'll do A, and we'll go from there. Hey, C. I'm gonna put it down here. Put the first piece here. Right. Here it comes. Same process. Two rainbows. Why not do a black rainbow? Let's do two rainbows in green. Two rainbows in red. Here it comes. Green. Wish me luck. Negative four times negative four is a positive sixteen. So far, so good. Negative four times a negative three i is a positive twelve i. Take a look at those two numbers in green. See if you're confused. What do the red? Ah. Three times the negative four is a negative twelve i, which is what it should be. The middle two should be the same um, numbers, opposite signs. And the last one. You need to remember that i squared equals a negative one. You're gonna need to know that. Because here it comes. Three times the negative three is a negative nine. I times i. I'm gonna put it as an i squared just for a second. I times I is like, just like a letter. X times X is X squared. B times B is B squared. All right, Thomas, let's go from this row to this one. This is where some people get lost. I wish you luck. Here we go. Step one. The 12s are going to cancel out. Why? Positive 12 minus a uh, negative 12, or positive minus the 12, they cancel out, leaving just the 16 at the beginning. Just like the X squared at the beginning. The middle is gone. The middle is gone. What's down here on the end? Mm, let's do it. Nine times the negative i. Let's see if they can feel this. Negative nine. I squared represents a negative one. We're not confused. I squared equals a negative one. I squared equals a negative one. We're at the end now. This negative nine times negative one is going to turn into a positive nine. That's magical. My friend over here is 16 and just waiting to add on to somebody. And the final answer would be 16 plus 9 
down to the 25. Have to take a look at it, see if they're afraid. Follow, see if there's something you want to ask. You will do one of these. So, look at it. If you're not afraid of this answer, you have to do the same thing up here. Okay. On the vertex, it's going to be a 3, X to your 3, comma 2. 3, comma 2 is the vertex. I write this thing out. A long time ago, you can send me a remember to write a parabola. It's going to be y equals an x uh, in a parenthesis. Uh, so you may recall the original was right here. They moved it up to. Moved it up to. And they moved it to the right three. But of course, the sign here has to be the opposite of this one, like unit. One, two, and three. You may remember that. Let me may have to um, struggle on this one. What happens when you try to find the x-intercepts? Uh, I'll just put they don't exist. And this one just goes right in there. Okay. That's in the picture. You can draw your line here. Um, that answer means in order for there to be an x intercept, your picture needs to touch the x axis at some point. If your picture does not touch the x axis, you don't have an x intercept. They can go see if you have a question. One other thing they're going to ask you, I'm going to try and draw this on the side. It might be too much one time, so we may have to fix or do something next time. Uh, is this. I think they ask a question something like this. Um, is it possible to have just one, with parabola, is it possible just to have um, one x intercept? So here's the deal. Here are three examples. This one is a no x intercept. Oh, I think so. No, zero. Hey, how many times does this picture touch the X line? Oh, zero times. Hey, how many times does this picture touch the X line? Oh, once. Oh, how many times does this um, parabola touch the X line? Oh, twice. Um, zero, one, and two. Um, Back that away when you get to that one. I think I'm just going to not offer it to you what it wants you to do with it. Thing right now isn't worth it, so I'm gonna give you a little gift when it comes to that one. Let me do two more problems, um, see what you, how you feel about them. Uh, rather three, and then um, the thing your hands, see what you uh, do with it. And then we'll determine how much of these happen on, um, on Tuesday. Our right, last two pieces at 24, squaring it, and that long one, so three long problems, which means they'll get. And that's 15. All right, I'm gonna do you that one. Allow me to attempt this problem again that I backed off of. Huh? Here we go. Step one, Thomas. I'm making up another one so it doesn't work out as smooth as this one. The exponent. I want to break it into two pieces so that one of the pieces is a 4 and the other guy is 4 times whatever will give me that number. So in this particular case, hopefully you can see that 4 times 6 gives me a 24. That's not too bad. The first number needs to be a 4 if I can get it to be that. Um, then I just put i to the 4th here um, and I will then rewrite the bottom i to the 4th. Always 
and it says, let's pause there. Let's just write it down. Tell them what I just did. Hey, step one, Thomas, look at your number. Hopefully it's uh, divisible by four. If it is, you're so happy because the answer is one and you're done. You don't know it yet, but yeah. If it's divisible by four, break it into pieces. Four times what will give you this number? I don't know, four times. Divide four into that and get that answer. Once you have that, you will rewrite this original problem as I to the fourth power raised to the sixth power. Why can you do that? Because that's what we made now. When you raise the power to a power, you're just multiplying those two numbers together. When you raise the power to a power, you're just multiplying those two numbers together. Here's the beauty of this. I to the fourth power is equal to one. Instead of I to the fourth power, you really just have a one raised to the sixth power. So that that's huge. One raised to any power is one times one times one times one times one, which equals just get one. Let's try it again with one that's not so neat. That we do it. I-26. Huh? 25. 4 can't go into 25. That's not so good. So here's what I do. I break the original thing into I-24 times I-1. Um, Something you may recall. X to the second power times X to the third power equals X5. If you've forgotten these guys, it becomes a little tricky. Uh -huh. You have to side by side, you add them together. If they're inside parentheses, you multiply the exponents. You've got to remember those two little rules. Hey, okay, Thomas, so why do you want to split it up? Because I want one of these i's to be a uh, multiple of four, because if it is, I can do that thing to it, which turns into this thing here. Hey. Which turns into this thing here. You may remember this, we just did it a second ago. Which turns into this thing here. So this left side, he wins. As long as his exponent is a divisible, is um, a multiple of four. <coughs> if four can go into this side, you are happy because you know it's turning into one. Hey, but Thomas, what am I going to do with that, like, that, that leftover i, the i1? He keeps coming down. I I one. I I one. Yeah, it has to be lower full size. And one time anything is just that thing itself. We really should put that one on that I, but I'm gonna do it. Pause, look at it. Some other math teacher lose their mind. Don't put one on a letter. I'm fine with it. And you're like, I get it, I got it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just apologize and move on. Let's do this 26 and hopefully you'll start feeling the pattern. I need a 26 to be a 24. Why a 24? Because it's divisible. Let me make a 36. Let me make a 36 so that there's nothing special about the 20s. Let's make a 36. Hopefully this will work out. 36. Shoot, 36 is bad. I know why 36 is a bad number. Like I was going to use 26. It has to do with being divisible by 4. Yeah, 4 can go into 36 and therefore this whole thing automatically just equals 1 automatically. The minute you see that the exponent is divisible by um, 4, the whole thing is going to turn into a 1. 26 was my hard problem, so let me get back to the 26, I figured I'd turn it to 36. 26, what do I need? Um, I need you to be a 24. First, I need you to be I, a 24, times I, 2. 24 plus 2 equals 26. Step 1, break them side by side. The good news is, now that I'm used to this, anybody that's divisible by 4, I know you, be a one without doing all the work. 
What's gonna happen to his friend? Anybody know what I to the second power equals? Yeah. Yeah. Equals negative one because of that little chart thing. So the four he equals one. Uh, so the two equals negative one. His friend here is that guy, and this guy here is a negative I. Um, these technically you memorize, um, especially this guy and this guy. And you take out your notes when it's time. Look at that one, see if you want to ask something here. Uh, Three, two. Uh, remainder two. What you notice as he circled the 32 and the 2. Hopefully they see that. So this I-34 is going to be I-32 times an I-2. Um, Pause right there, that's the hard part. Anybody want to ask me where I got my 32 or where I got my 2? Divisible by four automatically to one. Okay. Same problem. Did I just do this problem a second ago? Okay. Let's try this again. Right now, take a look at it. See if you want to ask me something. That's weird. I just did that problem somewhere. Did it before? Can do that same way. Oh, because the remainder two. Thirty-two. Um, I need to break this into two pieces. Um, so that um, one of them is divisible by four. So I actually take the original, I divide it by four. Four goes into 34, eight times, eight times four is the 32. Um, the end. I'm gonna do the second half of this one, which you need to do to get the whole answer. But I'm going to do it as a separate problem because they'll have two separate ones. They'll have one that's just um, two pieces raised to the second power. Then they'll have one like two pieces raised to the second power with his best friend and his girlfriend waiting for them at the door. They'll be like Richard out there waiting. Yeah, like that. And I'm his imaginary friend. Alright, so let's do this. Um, hey Thomas, how are you going to do this one? I'm going to write it twice and I'm going to do the rainbow. I'm sure there's a shortcut that I don't see the rhythm to, but I'm just going to do the rainbows for now. And when the, um, when it shoots out at me, I'm like, oh shoot. Again, this is back in the day. X plus 4 squared equals um, X squared root X plus 4. There is a rhythm to the easy one. Here comes the rhythm. I'm not going to use it. The rhythm on the easy one is you square the first part. You square the last part. The middle piece is three things together. One, two, three. What the heck? One, two, three. That is. I'm gonna put the two first. <clears throat> times the four second. Times the x third. In other words, when I erase them to the second power, the first part of the answer, you get it by just squaring the first part. The second part, or the very last part rather, you get it by squaring the last part. Well, the middle piece. You just multiply the three pieces that you were given to begin with. That is the pattern. I'm going to use the long version and then maybe over here I'll do the pattern and see what it feels like. Hey, long version, Thomas. Green, green. Red, red. This is the long version. They gave me a one, so it goes one times one is one. One times a negative two i. This is a negative two i. Nothing's going to disappear on this one because these are not conjugates. They're identical twins. Negative 2 times a 1 is a negative 2. Negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4. I squared that I squared will turn into a negative 1, unfortunately. But this is the hard version of it. I'm going to do the fast version of it here to see if it was any easier. Okay, Thomas, let's see what we got here. We got a 1 at the beginning. In the middle, when you add those two together, I have a negative four eyes. I'm going to try to make that disappear, but it's not. It's just going to get bigger. At the end, I'm going to do a four, but this i squared, I'm going to write it as a negative one. Where did I get the negative one from? The i squared? Yeah, i squared equals negative one. 
4 times a negative 1 is a minus 4. And now we're down to combining like terms. Like terms. So 1 is a 4. Ah, you can put the 4 together? No, I mean, anybody who's a regular number. 1 and the negative 4 is a negative 3. Sorry about that. Negative 4 i just comes down because there are no other 4 i's. I'm going to pause and let you look at it. See how you feel about it. Whoa. Wait a minute. Here. What happened to the other i? I mean, they combine it with those two i's. Look at it, see if there's anything you want to ask. Where'd you get this? Where'd you get that? The i squared turns into a negative of uh, 1. Uh -huh. Now here's the truth. This part is this here. I'm not going to break down all this stuff and combine like terms. So when you do this long problem, which will be on your test, you do this part first without the negative. It was going to be. And then you get the answer. Now let me do the shortcut version over here. Let's see if it works. I'm going to square u, square u. And then put all three of you guys in the middle. Here we go. One squared. The beginning. The end. Uh, is it a whole negative? Yeah, I'll put the whole thing. Negative two i squared. And the middle gets to be a one times a negative two i times a baby two. Let's see what this looks like. One squared is just a one. I squared, and then the middle friend, one times that's nothing, negative, what, two times that, you become a negative four I, so it works, but it's a little bit messy, yeah, it's a little bit messy, that's the slide here, and then it goes on, I would just do the long version. Thomas, well, what are you doing with this? The sad part is, all this stuff was a uh, parenthesis, now I just have this minus sign that was here. Minus sign, everyone has to get in a parenthesis, and this guy in the front. But whoever did all this, hopefully this is worth two points so I can give you credit for doing that part, because most people mess up on the last part, and I'm sorry that they do. Why are they going to mess up on the last part? This minus sign. It's going to change both these signs inside. You go like, dang, what the heck? You know what? This is just worth two points. That I'll skip. How about that? I'll just skip this one. I'll take a hit. Um, here it comes. Oh, yeah, for sure. If there's multiple credit, doing, yeah, trying on this one, I'm giving that one. Um, there it goes. You become a three. You become a positive four i. His brother here was a minus five i. You were a positive three. Last part, really, you gotta put this on here. An eight and three are regular numbers. That becomes just a, an eleven. A negative five and a positive four, they become a negative one. I. Final answer. Final answer, where are you? You are a eleven, you stay, and you don't write it once, minus I. Box it. Let them look at it. Then by the love or hate math because of it. Look at it, look at it. So here's the plan. 